Hey everyone, we're here at SHOT Show 2020 and I am with Dan at the Psyonix booth and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Psyonix, it's honestly something I recently came across, um, but basically you guys are offering uh, both daytime cameras and night operating cameras um, in a very nice form factor with a lot of different utilities and we're going to be kind of focusing on one of those but for maritime stuff uh, just recreational like action camera stuff with night operating capabilities um, now color night vision um, but kind of get us from the beginning who is psionics and how did you guys get into what you're doing now sure well psionics actually started in 2006 okay uh, there was a there was a phd student out of harvard at the time mm -hmm. and um our founder of the company, the, the CEO currently, uh, met those folks and we put the company together from there and okay. started growing it. And so what was your guys' first um, product as far as like the cameras? So the company primarily started as a semiconductor company. Okay. We made the sensors. So okay. we own the sensors. We have patents on the sensors. So we control our destiny as far as what products we want to put out there. So. Sometime in the 2013 time frame in, in there, they decided that uh, they actually wanted to create product, end user product as well. Okay. Um, so they took some of the, they started design work on cameras and uh, we launched this, you know, back in 2017, 2018. Okay. And so you guys started with like the Sport and the Aurora, um, or at least those are your kind of models that have been around for a little bit now. Right. But now with SHOT Show, you guys are announcing the Pro. That's correct. So what kind of sets the Pro apart from kind of your other products you've had already and especially compared to some of the other products on the market? Yeah, so as a, since like I said, we control our own destiny because we manufacture and design the sensors. So as, a, as any sensor or any product company does, we innovate. Mm -hmm. So we, we are constantly innovating our technology and when we create a new sensor, that we can use for a next generation camera, mm -hmm. we put that in there. Okay. So we've taken, we've gone from the, the first generation sensor that we announced with, with the white camera and the other black camera, mm -hmm. the Sport and the Aurora Classic, and we created a new sensor that we're putting into the Aurora Pro. Okay. And so, what kind of features, if people aren't familiar with the Psyonix cameras, what kind of features does this give the end user? Well, first off, the camera was meant to allow people to enjoy all life's moments 24-7. Okay. Okay. So look at how many people are taking their cell phones, their GoPros, and they're out there all night long trying to go, oh, let's see this, or, right. you know, and they get it back and it's all dark and black. Yep. So we wanted to make sure that we gave a camera that could not only shoot in the daytime, but also shot 24-7 into the night. Okay. And so that's that's what we did. Okay. Um, so the camera is, it takes photos, okay. it takes videos, it has time-lapse photography oh, okay. on it as well. It also does a thing that we call event triggering. So if I have it mounted on a rifle, as an example, mm -hmm. and I take a shot, it will give you up to 30 seconds on either side of the shot. Oh, really? Okay. So you don't have to sit there and hit the record button. I'm going to shoot. Right. Okay, hit the record button. Awesome. Um, so just that kind of leads us into where I wanted to go because kind of my, my whole reason of being interested in psionics is the more kind of tactical aspect of it right. and being able to integrate it with using as a rifle mount or using with a helmet mount. Sure. And so obviously we have it set up here. You can just use this with a standard optic. You get, it has a rail mount. You can run yeah, we, it. We, we never built it uh, to actually be a, a rifle mountable device. That mm -hmm. was not the intent. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we launched it, so many customers started mounting it to their rifles. So the next thing we did is we actually made a Picatinny rail mount. and. And the Picatinny rail mount was meant so that we had a, it fit most of the tactical scopes. Okay. So this is an inexpensive Chinese <laughs> scope. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have something better on here to show, but. <laughs> but, but it demonstrates the concept. But it de demonstrates the concept. Yeah. It's, if you look at it, it's actually an inch and a half, our, our camera is an inch and a half optical center okay. off the rail. So most of the tactical scopes um, are an inch and a half. So mm -hmm. it fits right in front of the, of the uh, scope mm -hmm. and it turns your day scope into a night ca uh, vision scope. Now, because we are also focusing in on the, the electronic viewfinder, 
We don't recommend that you go more than 3x magnification on the oh, scope. Okay. Otherwise, you start zooming in the pixels and making them sure. larger. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, but if you're using just like a one power optic or a low power variable, it right. should pair it, up. It works well. fine. Okay. And we have there's a lot of YouTube videos of people using the camera in that way. Okay. And and one thing that I I like about digital style optics like this versus your more traditional PVS 14s, PVS 7s, anything like that is if let's say I'm you know, just messing around with this, playing with this at home, right. and all of a sudden someone kicks a light on. Am right. I going to burn out a tube and have to spend thousands of dollars for it? No, it? you know, in fact, I can I can put this in day or night mode. There are multiple modes of operation, so you have day, twilight, and night mode. But it's in night mode right now, and I can stare up at any light, and it's not going to hurt. Awesome. And, you know, with, with me, I'm looking at getting into kind of an entry-level series, talking about how to integrate night vision. I can guarantee I'm going to make mistakes along the way. And I can guarantee you some of those mistakes are going to be involved looking at light sources right. and not completely destroying my investment when I do so and when I make those mistakes. Basically, failing in a safe manner is right. a very appealing and process. And there's also no bloom. So when oh, I okay. look at a light, it doesn't blow up in the, in the, the EVF. And, and, okay. You and know. do like the auto adjust and even right. anything like that. It doesn't that. hurt your eyes and none of that. Awesome. So. You have like the the rail mount like we showed. Yep. You, the standard mount on it is just like a regular tripod mount, correct? Yeah, it's a, a standard quarter inch twenty. Okay. Tripod mount. But we also have a helmet mount here, which um, this one is specifically bridged. And you guys don't make the the helmet system, but it is compatible with some systems out there, right? Yeah. So this is a standard Wilcox type of type of mount. The dovetail mount that's on here that holds the cameras. And I'll take I'll take that off really quick here. So this is actually made by one of our customers. Okay. Um, because we don't make mounts for the cameras, uh, some of our customers have gone out and started 3D printing and machining their own dual mounts. Now okay. I can do a monocular on this, so I can take one of them away. Sure. Or I can use both. There's IPD adjust here, so this will move the the um, oh. eyepieces in and out for your People for your IPD. For That's the fancy right. terminology. Yep. <laughs> and and of course all the other adjustments are on the, the Wilcox uh, type of mount. So you can put it up and use these as nods. Awesome. Now, with that, specifically uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about is some people sure. who who are may have been done research on these, specifically using as nods, something helmet right. mounted. Um, I know there has been some discussion about the refresh rate and how that impacts the usability of it in sure. that context. What what are what do you say about that? Like, what? So, what are your thoughts? So, the first thing everybody needs to understand is that we made a camera. Sure. And in the electronics um, uh, way, you have the sensor, mm -hmm. and then you go to a processor, and that processor then does image processing before it sends it to the eye. Mm -hmm. So, because it was a camera and not a pair of nods. Right. You have that processor in a way which causes lag. Okay. Now our lag is about 16 milliseconds. Okay. You need the human eye detects anything over 10 milliseconds. Okay. So, so we're six milliseconds of lag sure. that is in there. Now, for most people that's do, using this as a hobby, mm -hmm. no big deal. Sure. If you're a SWAT member, that six milliseconds is too much. Sure. Right. Fair. So, can we do? A camera or or a nod mm -hmm. that has zero latency, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, okay. because all it means is we take the processor out mm -hmm. of the video path and we feed the video straight to the eye, okay. and then there's no lag. But then you lose the being able to record. No, you don't. Oh, really? No. So okay. you set up what you do is you set up a dual path for uh, the signal. Okay. So you send half of it down one path to the video side that's going to be processed for recording. Okay. You send the other part back to the eye. Okay, so then that kind of begs the question, is that something you guys are ever planning on doing? You know, I'd like to say we talk about our future products, sure. but we don't. <laughs> okay, fair. that's totally fair. Now, one of the cool features of the Pro model um, that we haven't touched on is you guys have kind of a find your friends feature with that. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, so what we do is that we have an app uh, that works on, on iOS and Android, and that app communicates to the to the camera okay and and if multiple people like in our what we call our T mode mm -hmm. if you and I are out in the woods and you have a camera and I have a camera and I want to know where you are all I have to do is turn on the app and I scan the horizon and it'll show me exactly where you are and how far away you are from me I, so I 
I don't think we can understate how nice of a feature that can be. If you're working in at night, knowing where the people are, especially in a hunting context, if you're yes. looking at for hogs and you hear some brush ruffling off to the right. side, being able to make sure that that's not a hog and that that's actually your, right. your buddy right. is an extremely valuable feature, I think. And how many people can be on that system? It's, it's unlimited and the mileage is unlimited. I can say you're 50 miles away and okay. it'll show me. Now, that's the first release of the augmented reality. Okay. We will also do a release for boaters um, later on in a couple of months that will show you what we call AIS information. Okay. And, and what that is is most commercial boaters have a, an ID that's being transmitted, tells oh. you the okay. name of the boat, the course, the speed, where it's coming from. And when you look in here, out on the water, and you see a boat, it'll tell you that information as well. Awesome. And now let's say, again, in a boating context, if you're trying to navigate at night, you can pair that to like an iPad, have that mounted on your boat, Absolutely. and then actually guide while looking through your yes. iPad. You can actually use an iPad or Android device, control the camera 100 feet away. Oh, OK. Awesome. Um, so again, there's some really neat features with, the, especially with this Pro. Again, that being able to identify where your friends are at to me seems like a really awesome feature. It, it is, it's especially if we're guys who are doing airsoft or something like that. Knowing where your teammates are yeah. can be pretty, pretty handy. A no very friendly fire, feature. exactly. <laughs> at least no excuse for friendly fire. That's right. Um, so um, that kind of functionality is something I'm really excited to see from these, and hopefully, I'll be getting some actual hands-on experience with these at some point in the future. Um, but to me. A concept like this where, you, if you don't mind me throwing prices out there, MSRP for when the Pro comes out is going to be $799. We're actually selling it now, pre-sale. Okay. So it's $799. $799. The, the, the uh, Aurora Classic camera, which has the green band, uh -huh. that was $799. It's now $599 oh. for as long as quantities last. Okay. And then we, we will end of life that, okay. and Pro will take its place completely. Gotcha. But if you're looking at getting into night vision as I am, Getting into something at seven ninety nine is a lot more appealing than getting it's, into something at twenty eight hundred to thirty two hundred dollars on like right. a PVS fourteen. And, and the, again, I can fail safely with something like this, where I don't have that with a PVS fourteen. Yeah, and and the improvements that we made with the new sensor are significant. Yeah, this actually the lens on here alone sees three times more IR energy than oh. than what it did before. Right. So we actually see lasers and designators that Gen three can't see. Really, and yes. that was one thing I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, with the Aurora and the Sport, from what I understand, you definitely want to pair that with an IR illuminator. But I've heard that this one is, again, more sensitive to where it's not as much of a necessity to have that backup Yeah, IR. I mean, we, we are not a Starlight device, mm -hmm. so we can't operate with just Starlight. Mm -hmm. But for the price performance, there's nothing else on the market that can beat it. So um, that's pretty neat. So if people want to find out more information about these or your other line of products, where can they get that information? Psionics.com. Okay. And of course, if they want to see how people are using it, we have thousands of users on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. So I'll have links below. Uh, I think YouTube should be safe with posting links to this kind of a product. So uh, yeah. at very least, it'll be on screen. It doesn't have a barrel on it. Exactly. It doesn't, no projectiles come out of it. So that's a good sign. Um, so I'll have links either on screen or in the description. Um, I think it's definitely worth taking a look at. Again, I'm going to be hopefully taking a good hard look at these in the coming future and possibly comparing them to some of the other dedicated nods out there on the market. But kind of more on that to come as, as things get figured out on that front. Um, I'm hopefully going to be doing a long-term series on how to integrate night vision because that's something I've been looking to do for a while. And to me, this offers a lot of awesome features that I wasn't kind of getting from some of the other options out there. But uh, anything else you want to say about Psionics or the product? I think that's, I think that's all. Okay, well, Dan, thanks, thanks very Ryan. much for your Appreciate time. It. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more coverage from SHOT Show 2020, so definitely stay tuned for that. Again, if you're interested in these products or want to find out more information, like I said, there are people using these. There are some videos out there, at least on the uh, uh, older models, so definitely check those out. Again, check out their social media. But anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching.